Hey y'all, it's St. Pam again. Today I'm going to talk about the possible ways to roleplay some of the classes from Camelot Unchained. I'm going to start with the Vikings as I am still most likely going to play within that realm. Until I can really dig my teeth into the classes, this is going to involve quite a bit of guesswork. So let's start with the Arisen. This is a class that is filled with people that kill themselves every day. What sort of person would swear to do this? With this class, I think it will be important to discover your character's mindset in order to understand why they would be willing to make such a sacrifice. If I were to create one of these characters, I think that she would have to be uh, one that has a great love and loyalty for her realm. In my mind, she would be something of a super patriot. Either that, or it would speak of a great faith in her god or gods. Then again, maybe she's just masochistic. Those are just a few possibilities. The next class I want to talk about is Child of Loki. This is a character that can change into the form of several animals, and that is where their power comes from. As this is a tradition that was started by Loki, uh, that is where I think the focus of the RP would come from. As you all know, Loki is a trickster, and not only that, but if you are familiar with the Asatru lore, then you are aware that he is a little on the evil side as well. Maybe more than a little. He lived in Asgard and was treated as an Asari, but his father was a giant, and it's unclear what his mother's race is, I think. I, I think she was another giant, though. I'll, I'll have to go and look that up. As a result, his loyalty is questionable, though, to say the least. Even his wife, Anger Boda, isn't one of the Asari. Uh, I think this should inform you of how to play this class. If these characters do not sow a little chaos, then I would be surprised. I could see these characters befriending people only to use their weaknesses against them, or if they don't, then I believe they would play on a lot of pranks and not the nice kind of pranks either. The really mean sort. Like the sort that they have videos of now, where I'm pretty sure someone's going to end up getting hurt. If their friends aren't good sports, or at least understanding, then I don't think they'll have many friends for very long. Now we have the Hellbound. These characters have devoted themselves to Hell, and as a result, they have powers over both life and death. They can heal and destroy within ma with magics that can be difficult to control especially for those that are new to it. And I think that these characters would have an immense respect for life. I do not think that they would use their powers for any reason other than to protect their realm. It's not a class I believe would lend itself easily to an evil mindset, though they could probably easily be a little chaotic. Um, but the Mjolnir is a class that takes their rage out on their foes. That in itself makes me think of role-playing them much the same way that I would have a Berserker, which I actually kind of have an idea for a Berserker character. Um, I would play up the rage and show that you would not like her much like the Hulk, when she is angry. Since I already had this in mind for a character, then most likely, if I am still Viking, this will be the 
class that I play. Shadow walkers come from an own, unknown origin and travel not only through the night, but also through the veil. Their abilities were born of fear, but they soon learn to take joy in them. The strength comes at a price. Shadow walkers are very sensitive to the light. Unlike your traditional rogues, I think these characters would have an air of mystery. I believe it would be very difficult to get close to them, and I think these characters would be more than a little standoffish. Now, next we have the Skald. This is a bard-like class, but they rely on their own voices more than their instruments. Being Vikings, they do not only need their magics, but are also highly skilled with weapons. Unfortunately, we don't really know what those weapons will be yet. But personally, I see this class as the military leaders among the Vikings. Uh, I see them as being very persuasive and commanding because of how they can use their voices. Uh, they may even act as a type of dignitary or diplomat to the other Arthurian factions. Even with their abilities, though, that might be stretching a little bit. The next class we have is the Slaughter Wolf. They are magic wielders that are intertwined with a love for wolves, hence the name. They and their wolves are fierce during battle and ravenous afterwards. If I were to play this class, then I think they would form a pack with others they feel they can trust. They would only accept you after you have done something to prove yourself to them. The Slaughter Wolves, I think, would take on a lot of characteristics of the animals that they love so much. I don't really think that would be a stretch. Now, let's talk about stone healers. These healers use stones to heal others, but their own health is linked to the stones as well. If one of these stones is destroyed, it will injure the healer as well. I would play this character in a similar manner that I do my current healer. What I mean is that she would be rough around the edges and perhaps a little distant from uh, those that she doesn't really know well. Uh, kind to friends and vicious to anyone that she sees as a threat. But this class also very much makes me think of a troll in the guild that I'm in. Uh, I don't think she is there any longer, unfortunately. She was great. She actually did throw rocks at people to heal them. So she had healing rocks. So, um, other than that, you know, she was somewhat similar to my healer, except she threw rocks at people. She thought that if it didn't hurt, it wasn't working, if I remember right. Um, we have the Wave Weaver next which are mages that specialize in the use of water. I think that's pretty clear by the name. They are much more at home near bodies of water, which makes sense, but they can use their abilities even if they're not near the water. This class, I think, I would play somewhat like the waterbenders from Avatar. All I mean by this is that I would have them carrying some water with them, even though it's clear that they don't need it. If they're most comfortable near bodies of water, I really think that they would probably carry some with them. I honestly think they would probably be a little paranoid about being too far away from water. And I think they would be very unhappy about being in 
a desert area. Now we're on to the last class, Winter's Shadow. This is an archer class. They are highly skilled uh, in both archery and camouflage. They are silent and they have supreme survival skills. They also have a mastery of shields and other weapons. This class I think has an obvious play style for role playing. Uh, they would be hunters, scouts, and special forces. Some of them may be hermits as well. Uh, I would see them infiltrating the enemy's camps easily. They also, I think, could serve pretty well as spies. I mean, if they are um, that quiet and have survival skills like that. Of course, the ultimate thing for any archer is being a sniper. So that's certainly a uh, option there. No, it looks like I got them all. Yeah, so that is it for the classes. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope this helps with any uh, character development or give you a, a starting place uh, for possibilities on your own character.